Jai Ho, we made it. You realize we could get this uh, idea that this whole area is uh, protected, it would be nice. <laughs> Let's go with maps. Hare Krishna, today we are with my good old friend Giri. Mm. I know him since a long time from Giri Dari Das. Giri Dari, Prabhu. <laughs> das, Das. <laughs> Giri Dari Das. Uh, I know him actually from, from Vrindavan and, uh, and he used to have a very beautiful house in Vrindavan built out of clay. Yeah. Clay and cow dung, yeah. I think. Mm, cow dung is plaster, like okay. paint wet. But Main thing is clay. Yeah, like and that. now he's building a very special house here in Mayapur, and this we want to show you today. <laughs> so already the foundation was here, and then the Mataji, who owns the place, invited me to come and build clay, the clay which is called cob, on top. So this is mixed between clay, yeah, clay, clay sand, and straw. Clay, sand and straw. So most of the clay, the, the type of clay that you generally need for building, we have here on the site, which is really good. So it, it cuts cost and it just makes it easy. We don't have any transport or you don't need to use tractors to transport. And then okay. we use a building sand because it's a better quality for building. And then the straw is the local rice straw, which is also available locally. So they're all pretty much local materials. And yeah, right now it's a rough. It's not been fully plastered or finalized. So when it's all done by hand and foot, right? The mixture is done by foot and it's laid by hand and everything is, you know, flattened and done by hand. And it's called cob. And cob is now very a very famous type of building material from USA to, to India now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's basically the right amount of clay with the right amount and the right type of sand mm -hmm. and straw. You really get a super strong material. Yeah. I still want a mud house. I want it to look natural, feel natural and do it with my own hands. But I want it to last a really long time. I don't want to have to maintain it all the time, right? <clears throat> so this is that, that, this is that, you know, it's made of mud, it's made of natural ingredients, but it really does last, it's very strong actually. It's a very strong material and even if you will hammer on it, you will see that it doesn't crack very easily. Yeah, actually he, he has also helped us and I think it's nice for them yeah. kids to learn because it's not very uh, it's not like a construction site right yeah. it's not very dangerous yeah. for anyone and everyone men women and children a whole family to actually work on such a thing yeah. and it can be a community effort how long does it take to build we have done you know projects which they came out really quickly just because we did in Brindavan where it's dry so it really dried extremely fast so every single day they laid about 10 inches mm. you know, so it, it didn't really take too long to finish a uh, building like this size so immediately I would ask, what's the benefit instead of using bricks like anyone, everyone else? Well, one thing is it feels nicer. It's, it feels it's nice. nice. Yeah, it's nice because, uh, well, if you know about the three gunas, right? Sattva gun, Raja gun, Tama gun. These materials are fully sattvic. And the, the actual uh, making of it, you know, actually building with hand and feet, it's very, it's a slow process, but it's each and every, you can say, really particle of the building was done with the uh, mind, you know, with the mm. intention of building. And it's not just done in a factory, like people make bricks for money, mm. then they sell it and it's transported by f many tractors and many people. And it's a, a lot of, uh, how do you say, industry and a lot of pollution involved with it. Mm. This is fully biodegradable also. So if by chance I didn't want to, or let's say I want to even make a window here, I can easily crack this, put this same material back into a bucket of water and reuse it somewhere else. So it's totally, you know, recyclable. Of course, and no harm to the environment at all. <coughs> also, it's um, it's uh, quiet inside, you know, inside of these walls. We mm. make them a lot thicker, 
and it also keeps the heat from coming in yeah. or if we wanted to heat a house like this it's easier so it's in like thermal you yeah. know for thermal purposes also yeah. easier to control the temperature we, uh, we actually want to see uh, as little impact on the environment and also you know, economically like you know how can somebody make their own house with their own hands simply with local materials you know without having to import and bring in and also make it comfortable and beautiful which I believe you can do all those things actually. Finishing, so we need to plant new different things. This is uh, some corn, the red windy. <laughs> Avocado, lemon, lemon grass, corn, uh, guava, chico, mm -hmm. and papaya. You see the papayas? Monkeys come, so we have to make put a net to protect them sometimes. Still kata. This is chalcumbra. Yeah really just and this is a pumpkin. If you, you should take every day, you take a little bit of tea. Mm -hmm. This strawberry. No, this is the dragon fruit. What actually saved my life? Animals. <laughs> so, I just try to really take care of these plants wherever I am. You had a nice tour? Yes. I saw strawberries. I saw capsicum. I saw sunflowers, I saw lettuce. I saw many more things I don't remember. Oh, I saw a broccoli. What do you think about this kind of lifestyle, so David Yeah, It's nice. I like it. So, Yuri, Yudari, where are you from actually? Was, where were you born? I was born in Long Island, New York. How did uh, New York Island boy ended up in the West Bengal jungle. Yeah, I ended up here because <clears throat> I was born in a lap of luxury, you can say. You know, and they always say a typical, uh, what people think of America. You know, rich family and uh, we had all the comforts. So my father was a businessman. He uh, supplied, you know, you say, all the necessities for the family. And then, of course, we had a lot of luxury uh, boats and cars and all the things. But uh, I still felt that he was not actually fully satisfied and I felt that in the community where I was, most of the people I had were very quite wealthy people. Uh, you know, everyone had swimming pools, tennis courts, fancy cars and everyone had money, a lot of money, but people were not really satisfied. And uh, if you think that living in a great country and having a lot of money means you'll be happy, well, I could see that people are not happy. I mean, maybe happy, you know, like uh, huh, they're enjoying, but actually not satisfied. That's the real thing. They were not satisfied. You know, as many material things as you get, they wanted more. As much money as they had, they wanted more. So if there's no limit to the amount that you need or want, that means you're not satisfied. And I started to feel like it doesn't really make sense. Like, why would I then endeavor for so much money, like my father, like everyone else, if you're just going to end up unsatisfied? 
So in the end I just felt that uh, I need to travel, you know, a little bit and meet different people from different uh, groups of society. And so then I learned a lot about you know, reincarnation, karma, different ideas, Eastern thought in particular. And then eventually I studied Bhagavad Gita, you know, and in the end of many different philosophies I found Bhagavad Gita to have the most uh, interesting uh, philosophy and it in, basically included all their types of religious ideas and philosophies. So for me that was the most satisfying of all the different books I studied. So I, I just focused on Gita and I was living in a mountain area, beautiful mountain area with lots of clear water rivers drinking from the spring water and cooking on wood and we didn't have electricity we didn't really need it and it was a very uh, beautiful and sattvic lifestyle and I was doing a lot of yoga and eating raw food and mostly everything from the garden so my mind became more and more purified and uh, obviously sattvic attached to uh, pure and sattvic things and then eventually uh, reading Bhagavad Gita I desired to chant as according to Bhagavad Gita this Maha Mantra, it was described, you know, that it can free us from all karmic reactions and, how uh, you say, introduce us to God. <laughs> Who I, I believed in the end, I believed this Krishna, you know, he is the supreme. So I started to chant Maha Mantra enthusiastically, living in the forest. I was just chanting alone in the jungle and I was becoming more and more attached to the process. Until the day that I felt that, why will I live in the jungle alone? Maybe in my next life I'll become a tree in the forest, you know. So I figured my human life will be spoiled. So I actually was desiring, I have to meet devotees, you know, so I don't waste my human body. <laughs> so I went, I just uh, thought, you know, the next car that passes by this uh, lonely jungle, this uh, forest area, in the North California mountains, the next car that comes through here, I'll just get in it and go wherever it takes me. And uh, it did take me to San Francisco, which is also another famous American city, which I wanted nothing to do with. And in the end, I, I went to the temple there because I felt that was a nice place to be because all the devotees knew the philosophy and prasadam and all the things that I really wanted. So basically, that's how I, I joined, you know, by living in a place where I had everything but feeling that uh, people are not satisfied with everything. So I realized there's something missing, you know, that inner satisfaction. And uh, Sanskrit, they call it Atmaram, right? The person who's self-satisfied. So that was my goal. And uh, now yeah, I, <clears throat> I prefer to have my feet in the contact with the earth and to live simply. And I don't uh, strive for you know, material opulence because I know that it doesn't actually satisfy the soul. So I prefer to grow my own vegetables. You can see here flowers and fruits. You know, we have a variety of vegetables, organic vegetables. And I'm just trying to take care of the plants because the plants take care of us. <laughs> and like this, it's a, it's a <clears throat> very nice uh, feeling actually. I get a very mm -hmm. nice feeling. What do you think about this kind of lifestyle, Murai? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, like simplicity is the highest sophistication. I come here to learn about how to live happy. We generally eat them, you know, fresh, small pieces of fresh and stuff. Like this? You cut it? Yeah, yeah. Actually, they say that it's very healthy for the blood, not cleaning the blood to eat a small piece of it, morning time, empty stomach. So I guess many types of diseases can be cured simply if people ate properly. Even Alzheimer's disease, right? The curcumin, curcumin one of the main ingredients, and has been found to improve like the brain health. You know, and so that's one reason why in India there's much less Alzheimer's, you know, because the people do tend to eat a lot more turmeric. So I mean, there's still medicine growing all around us, but we tend to go to the shop or trust the doctor to tell us instead of learning and then showing our friends and neighbors <laughs> what's locally available. Right? You built this oven, Giri? This uh, how say? Yes, yes. Stove? Yeah, it's a. Cooking stove. Actually, stove, and then we also made an adjustment for an oven on the side. Oh, you can even bake stuff. Yeah. Wow. Today we're doing a different style of baking. We have this thing here, which is a uh, abandoned tabla shell. <laughs> so okay. It's actually tabla. Yeah, yeah. But actually, uh, we use it for making naan or like a you know tandoori roti style. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, cool. It's just a makeshift thing because one day we decided to try, and it works okay. Okay. 
I like to cultivate the tree and to cut the branches, to prune it, then to you know water it, give it fertilizer, watch it fruit, you know, offer the fruits, and then take the seeds and then plant more of them, share the plants and grow more trees. So, and then you know when you have a space with many plants, you know you cut when one one plant is in the shade. You cut another tree to give light to that one, and you know you can actually cultivate the plants, mm. but you cultivate a relationship with them at the same mm -hmm. time. And I actually I need that. I really love working with plants and watching how they reciprocate by human, you know, interaction, actually mm. caring human interaction. So mm, yes. that we love to do. And this yeah. place is wasn't uh, I didn't plan on it. I just had the desire. I would like to have some place where I can do that. You know, cultivate a relationship with the plants, grow things, and. And uh, so then somebody somehow or other came in contact with me and told me about this project and then Chintamani asked me to help her with the building of the house plus the landscaping and gardening and then so that's why I say Mahaprabhu, I didn't plan on it or I had the desire but you know only Mahaprabhu knew where to put me, where I could actually cultivate the things, my desire. So, so here we are making mud houses and mud stoves <laughs> and living on the land and growing vegetables and it's beautiful. Yeah, it's marvelous kind of mercy on me. Yeah, I guess according to the Shastra, there's nothing more humble than a tree. You know, even if you abuse it, right, it still gives fruits, it gives flowers, and in the end, even if you cut it down, it gives its body and you can use it for cooking. I mean, that's pretty you know, humble. And humans are not really like that. <laughs> humans don't uh, you know, so easily give and give and you know allow you to cut them down. So. More humble than a tree. Yeah. To another piece than a tree. Yeah. Lower than the blade of grass, which means mud. Right? So you can live in a house of mud, so that means you're almost technically lower than a blade of grass. <laughs> you live in the mud. Eventually it will get hot enough and now you can see there's not even much smoke anymore. No? So mm -hmm. It's starting to like really heat up and it, uh, mo burn more efficiently. I think. So it's just a fast way to cook kitchen. <laughs> yeah. You have a yellow finger or what? Nice. Because of being being too lazy to make the patties, and then uh, just put it like this, huh? In the West, we used to make them, and we call them brahmachari bread. And it's not super hot, but the sides are hot, so it actually does it does cook pretty well. So this is the uh, partially baked. It'll, I'll put it in the, on the coals at the end, just to mm -hmm. get like the full roast flavor. Mm. Put me, you're the fire watcher. Uh -huh. Yeah. She's on fire duty. Fire duty. The coldest person on the plot. The coolest, the coolest person the coolest on the plot. Yeah. <laughs> Always have to make fire duty. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw them inside. Watch sometimes just to put them straight on the fire. Oh, nice. And then they, they get roasted like that. Are they they ready? <laughs> or you're yeah. gonna put them in there? No, they're mostly they're ready. I'm just trying to get them to puff one last time. So. What are you doing, Mama? Now? Water fighting. Water fight. Yeah. Oh. And what are the ladies doing here? What's, what's that? What Banana that? flower. Banana flowers? Mm. Wow. That's exotic. <laughs> That's 
Tulsi? For what? Offering. Let's give Tulsi to Let's give It's such a beautiful Tulsi tree. Well, obviously, it's, uh, I mean, you're growing for the pleasure of the Lord also. So all the endeavor, I mean, uh, just to uh, work hard in the field, you know, it's not, the, how you say, particularly, I mean, it's enjoyable. But if you work hard in the field using your body and mind and time to grow something, and then you actually get the fruit, it's so nice to be able to offer something that you worked like directly to plant and water and take care of. And then the tree also grows happily. And then you, both of you are together serving Krishna. It's actually very nice. It's very joyful, you know, to actually grow some, I mean, to offer something you personally grew. Because m many, most of us basically, we're just buying stuff in the market. We cook it and we offer it. I really feel that there's more love, you know, when you start from seed and you actually grow the thing and then you offer it at the end. I mean, we also have to cook it and offer. So it's a whole process from seed to the, you know, offering plate. And it's really enjoyable actually to do it this way. Sarada Vijaja Sarada Vijaja Dorendri Daika Dorendri Daika Jive Bilibisha Sagre Jive Plevisha Sagre Namadi Jivarati Namadi Jivarati Lava Masa Dormati Lava Masa Dormati Dakitakri Nasam Sari Dakitakri Nasam Sari Krishna Bada Dolamai Krishna Bada Dolamai Goribadi Jiva Joy Goribadi Jiva Joy Sabra Sadamadi Lobai to see the, the tree growing as big as you here. Mm -hmm. It's an what, orchid. What tree is it? Orchid tree. Orchid. Kantana is called in Bengali. It has this beautiful um, purplish, that is this color flower, just like this. <laughs> nice. So we need some um, some cow dung. Then we have to mix a little bit with earth. Now you plant together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Just pour the water like that. <laughs> Since the last time, we can always watch it now. We can watch it grow. As you grow, the tree will grow. Yeah, I mean the idea is it's uh, we're doing natural building, we're trying to do natural lifestyle and I'm not preaching full natural, everyone has to give up everything but the idea is that as much as we can do, right? And it's, it takes gradual steps and the first thing is obviously grow your own food, <laughs> have a piece of land, grow your own food. If you can make your own house, right, a homemade house, <laughs> what's more natural than that? Your own homemade, handmade house. So I do think it's nice for people to learn about it and maybe to get the desire. I had the desire and then you know Krishna arranged for me to have land in Vrindavan where I could actually do it. So we did our first mud house in Vrindavan. Thank you very much. It's beautiful. Okay. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thanks for the wonderful day.